Hey, good morning, Facebook, and Get Inspired Michiana. I'm Diane Bennett with Inspired Homes and Remax 100, and our guest for Life Inspired today is Ben Jerome. Thanks for being with us today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So we're really excited to dig in and get Ben's story. Um, so those of you that are joining us for the first time, basically when we do Life Inspired, we're talking about um, some kind of turning point in your life that pointed you towards God. Or if you've been walking with him for a really long time, maybe some turning point where you felt his nudge to go do something that he wanted you to go do. So it's all about following God, finding that turning point. We're going to talk about a particular thing in Ben's life. And first, we want to hear about the life before the dots. What was going on in your life before there was a turning point situation? Tell us about your life. Yeah. So actually, my life is really not that interesting. I was, I've was i been a pastor's son. Um, and so I kind of grew up in the church. Um, okay. And from a very young age, actually, my dad planted his first church when I was born. So there's wow. a church out there like the same age as me. Oh. And um, I just remember, you know, even at a very young age, um, standing next to my dad along, you know, these bedsides of, you know, people that were sick and, wow. and you know, just praying for them. And wow. at a very young age, I remember just the strong feeling that God had a calling on my life. Um, and, you know, as I got older and, you know, you go through your teen years and you kind of separate a little bit from that, but that feeling was always still there. But especially in high school, um, and I started kind of doing my own thing and, you know, um, not really caring about my grades or anything like that, I, I really started to struggle, um, especially my junior year. Um, and so the, actual, the school actually sat me down. They're like, Ben, you're not going to graduate if you don't get your act together. Like, your wow. grades are so awful. You're, you know, wow. you need to figure out what you're going to do. And at the time, my uncle, he, had, he was in welding and things like that. And he's like, Ben, you should try this weld, you know, try getting into welding. And so I got into the welding program. And I think that's really the first time I've met a teacher that actually cared enough to sit down and, you know, find, find what was going on. Yeah. Right. And so I actually developed this passion for welding. Cool. Um, and through that, he saw that passion and he started using that as a tool, you know, all right, you're not touching a welder until, you know, your grades start coming up. And so just, I would say he was probably like one of the first life coaches I've had, wow. um, which was very cool. Um, actually, you know, because my grades are so bad and even though I started getting them up, even my senior year, um, about a month before I was graduating, I didn't even know I was going to graduate. Oh, you still weren't sure yet? I still wasn't sure until, so finally they're like, all right, you're going to do it. And I was like, all right, great. But then you have that decision, all right, after now high school, what? what do you do? You're right, you know, your grades weren't that great. Do you try college? Do you work? And I had this passion for welding, so it was just a really natural fit to do that. Um, so I started that. Um, I started working at a concrete plant here in Mishawaka, okay. uh, and concrete in Indiana is very seasonal, right? So oh, when right. winter hits, that really slows down. Um, but I, I guess I'll back up a little bit. So I actually met my wife in sixth grade. Oh, wow. And okay. so I've taken her on this journey with me, like God bless through everything. Her. Okay. Um, we now have four kids. Wow. Um, and each one of them is a blessing. But so as I started working at this concrete plant, and I started out as this welder, I think I was like 18 years old. Um, and I started going through all these layoff periods. And so oh. I've probably been back and forth between this concrete plant and Verizon Wireless. So you, you go from this really dirty, hardworking side to like dressed up, you know, salesman side. And so God's just kind of given me that balance um, and the passion for both. Um, and you're married through this time. And so, yeah, at this point I'm married. Okay. Um, and every time that I went back to the plant, I came back in a different position. So the first time I was the welder. Then I was the quality control manager, and then I was the plant manager. And so now I'm this young guy in this union plant that's basically running it. Um, and all these guys that have been working there have basically been working there since they were like 18 years old. Right. And their life story is, you know, they've gone, they go across the railroad tracks, they drink, they'd come back, and they'd work. <laughs> that, right. That's what they used to do. Um, and so this new young kid coming in and, you know, doing all that, it's, it was a very interesting process. But that kind of leads me up to the very end, the very last time that I went there. And I didn't realize it at the time, but when I came back, the plant was actually shutting down. Wow. And so a part of my position there was actually to, you know, I had to let everybody go. Oh, wow. I had to, you know, basically do everything myself, dispatching, clear out the, clear out the yard and all of that. So at a very young age, that was a very difficult process, but it taught me a lot about business. Wow. It taught me a lot about what was good and what was bad and that kind of evolved into what I do today but at that same time my parents church and the church I was going to was going through a big divide um, okay. building project and so through that 
period of the plant shutting down, the church is kind of going through a separation, there was a lot of bitterness and anger that just kind of formed in my heart. Wow. And so I had that against God and just everything. And I remember every morning just driving to work, praying to God, like literally in tears. Yeah. Um, You're supposed to be a good guy. Exactly. You know, why am I going through this? Um, and so that's really kind of that, what led me up to that one point. Okay. So what was the turning point then? So that's what got you there. What, what's your dot, 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 and then God moment? Yeah. So the dot, dot, dot. So after the plant, I ended up working at another plant for a brief period of time um, where I was traveling about an hour and a half away just driving. And I used to listen to uh, Christian radio in the morning. And, and I just remember like all those little sermons and messages that were going through. And I, I, they really were speaking to me, you know, an hour and a half in the car, just listening to that, feeding yourself that every day. It really helped me heal. Okay. Um, and what I noticed is at that plant, I was more of a life coach like that teacher was to me to the guys there. They were going through a lot of, you know, just personal issues and things like that. Um, and so I kind of found, found myself on that path. Fast forward to uh, the position that I have now where I travel a lot. Um, you know, I probably travel, the last two years I traveled a lot more versus what I do now. But um, there was a, a gentleman that was on a plane and we were talking. Um, he, by the time we were done, he goes, man, are you a like a life coach or a career coach? What are you, you know? So I, at the time, I didn't even know what that was. Okay. But God, in the very beginning, even when I was younger, I just knew that I had a calling on my life. I didn't know if I wanted to be a pastor. I didn't know what that looked like. But as I started looking back over the careers that I've had, I've always kind of played this role in people's lives of helping them where they were. Right, right. You know? And so when I, after that plane uh, ride and I got home, I started Googling, what is, a life, what is a life coach? What's a career coach? Uh, and so now I, I do that on the side. I actually have a, uh, a, a small business where I basically help companies where they're going through struggles like what my plant went through. Right. Um, and, and on the personal side where people um, are going through things because I, I believe one of the biggest lies that we're told is, you know, don't take it personal, it's just business. Well, business gets personal and right. we take that home and, we, and it, it affects our families. And right. um, so, so that's really kind of where that started. Right. Okay. So, but you're doing this podcast. I am. So that's your thing that you're following God because you said go do a podcast. Tell us about your podcast. So the podcast is called Savage Truth. And okay. the whole reason I made that was because I believe that we're all, we have this battle in our mind, right? Of all yeah. these lies, of all these fears. And as I look back through um, what God has brought me through, he's really stretched me outside my comfort zone every single step of the way. Every position that I've had, he's pulled me out of it, including this podcast. Mm -hmm. It's like, why God, why me? Why should I be the one? Why should it be my voice? Right. right? But so the premise behind the podcast is just as savage as those lies and fears are, we have to be even more savage to go after God's truth. Very cool. Right. And so that's really what the podcast is all about. Very cool. So you interview people? I do. Okay. Yeah. And so they can, t where do they listen to the podcast? So you can go to Apple Podcasts. Okay. You can listen to it on Stitcher Radio or any, pretty much any place that you can find podcasts. As long as you look up Savage Truth Podcast, you'll find it. Okay. And you're asking them about how they um, defend the truth, that kind of thing? Pretty much, yeah. I just had a guy on there. Um, the last one was my dad. I actually did him and, and kind of his story. But the one before that was a, a gentleman named Dalton T. Beckles, and he's the author of Leverage to Win. Um, and he really has a great story about, you know, kind of what we're talking about right now. But I try to have, you know, guests on like that. But I also have just segments where it's just me and, and kind of my message out there. Right. So. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing your story and how you're following God today. What is what is the, what is daily following God look like to you? How do you how do you hear from him? You you heard from him when you were in the car for an hour and a half. Yeah. How do you hear from him today? Well, I think the most important thing is just like, you know, as everybody says, you are what you eat. It's the same spiritually, right? And so it's about where your attention is. And for me, I had to separate um, where my focus and where my attention was, whether it was the news, whether it was you know just negative conversations and Facebook and all those different areas. So for me, it's more of that the, the prayer life is so important and, and scripture. And um, not to say that I'm perfect because there's those days where I don't pray. There's those days where I don't read the Bible. But that's where grace comes in and God's like, all right, come on. You know, so I, I, for me, it's more of that personal walk, that journey that's realistic. That's like, you know. Got to be real. Yeah. It's got to be real. So I um, got to do something yesterday with some little girls and I gave them little um, uh, cart roses, but they were like silk roses. Okay. And then the place where we were meeting, I saw a sign in the church that said Christians 
are like flowers. And I thought, how crazy I was giving these girls flowers. Christians are like flowers. If you're not growing or dying, you're fake. Mm, yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm giving these girls fake flowers. But yeah, it, it, it's real. You Sometimes we are dying today a little bit because we yeah. walked a little bit the wrong way. But you know what? God's like, it's okay. Just turn it back around. Just yeah. turn it back around and have another little turning point. Yeah, so. and it's about our mindset because right. the battle is in our mind, right? And so Absolutely. that's really what that podcast is all about is taking out those lies, taking right. out those fears. And some, some fears are good, right? So God can use fears to, to steer you in different directions, you know. And, sure. But, um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. Well, thank you for having me. Awesome. All right. Well, Facebook, this is a great story, and we hope that you'll turn into turn search for the Savage Truth podcasts um, wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to, you know, meet up with Ben, he would love to meet with you and um, have a cup of coffee and talk to you about the Savage Truth. And then also, if you've got stories of other people that you know that are following God, how they turn to be that way, we'd love to share their stories. So, or if they got through some really miraculous um, thing with you know, anything in life that was difficult. So we appreciate you watching. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye, Facebook.